Trump's a longtime conservative stronghold, but Democrats have their eyes on Georgia's sixth congressional district in what has become the most expensive house race in history. Just this past week, a new ad from Democrat John Ossoff taking on his critics on his national security credentials. Let's put this to rest once and for all. I want to see ISIS destroyed. As an investigative filmmaker, I helped expose atrocities committed by ISIS against women and girls. They're evil, and we have to stop them. That's why I'll work to make sure our military and intelligence community have every tool they need to fight terrorism. The ad was partly in response to this from the National Republican Congressional Committee. ISIS is infiltrating America and using Syrians to do it. The FBI warned we can't safely screen every Syrian, yet John Ossoff's Liberal Party bosses brought 10,000 Syrian refugees to America with our safety at risk. John Ossoff is just too risky. Republicans want to hold on to, the, uh, to this district. Democrats want to flip it. Uh, and Tuesday's runoff election will give both parties a small glimpse at a possible playbook for how to run in the Trump era. Uh, Abby, you covered Democrats uh, in 2016. And in some ways, uh, this district in this race has some of the features of, of the 2016 race in terms of uh, Hillary Clinton. What do you think Democrats are looking for uh, and why are they spending so heavily uh, in this race? Well, I think the key here here in this district is going to be the, the sort of education divide that's always present in uh, politics, especially in light of the November election. This district is a little bit more affluent. It's moving toward the more college-educated side. You ha it is a Republican district, but those Republicans are, uh, are they've co they have college degrees, they are sort of working, um, sorry, I'm sorry, white-collar workers as opposed to so working-class, uh, high-school-educated folks. Um, and so that actually makes the dynamics a little bit different. It means that it, you're not going to see the same thing that you saw with Donald Trump. Some of those Republicans are much more um, skeptical of him. I think a lot of them want to give him the benefit of the doubt, but they're skeptical and they're willing to uh, to, to to turn, to right. flip in a, in a uh, congressional seat like Yeah, and, and he won this district uh, about, about one uh, percentage point. Uh, and you were talking about the demographics and the socioeconomics of, of this uh, of this district. Uh, and we've got a graphic up. Uh, the residents with bachelor's degrees or more in this district, 58 percent. You compare that to Kansas, uh, the fourth district there, about 28 percent. And the Montana uh, at large district, that was about 30 percent. Those two races, uh, Democrats obviously came up short uh, in those. Uh, and, and this idea, one of the things that Ossoff wants to do is, is basically Democrats come together and then peel off some of those uh, Republican Romney voters. Uh, Karin, what do you think uh, Republicans are looking for in this race? Which is which is tight as a tick, I'm told at, at this point. Uh, any anywhere from one percentage point will probably decide the the final uh, race. Right. I mean, I think it's to hold back what could be a swelling tide yeah. if Ossoff wins. I mean, if he wins, it's a signal to the Democrats that this is doable. That you can flip these districts that might be traditionally Republican but are not traditionally that Trump Republican, and thus it gives them a playbook for going forward. Does it give them a playbook that, that will win them the House? Unclear, because so far they've been making gains, even in Montana. You know, better showing than in the past, but but not quite enough to have it be a win, right? Yeah. So um, if they can win this, it's definitely going to be wind at their backs to keep going, and it's going to be very, very invigorating for the Democrats. Um, I don't, also, the other question, though, is if they lose, they have to take a, a look at themselves, because it's so odd that you have these two candidates, you know, being everything riding on these two candidates right. in this particular district. Neither of them is particularly rehearsed in politics. Um, that Karen was, Handel maybe a little yeah, bit yeah, more, a little more rehearsed. That's true, that's right. true, that's true. But just in general, the fact that, you know, you're having ISIS commercials in the last few days, it's like, yeah. w what, what are yeah. we talking about? <laughs> yeah, and, and here was <laughs> Sonny Perdue uh, was campaigning with Karen Handel. He, of course, is the agriculture uh, secretary and the uh, former governor of Georgia. Here is what he had to say to Republicans. I know some of you out there, some of you, some Republicans may even be turned off by our president. And uh, I don't think you are. I'm not, because let me tell you, let me tell you, I know his heart. And let me just share, I was in Miami yesterday with him. The president keeps his promises.
Jeff, that message seems to be something like, come on home to the Republican Party, even if you don't really want to. I'm not that's sure. extraordinary. Yeah, there. I'm being... Uh, yeah. and, and we're five months yeah. into the presidency. Yeah. And for the president to not be a valuable asset um, is pretty interesting. And that is a sign of things to come going forward. A lot of Republicans will not want to be sort of at his side campaigning. Uh, but I'm really struck by that. That's the first time I yeah. saw that, yeah. that he would say, okay, maybe you don't like him. But I think... Uh, the president here desperately would love to be down there involved in the fray of this. He's not wanted, quite frankly, and that is, uh, you know, something that probably stinks.